The Rise and Fall of Atari Gaming devices are widely used. According to a research by the Computer Technology Association from 2021, 53% of American houses had a video game console at the time, and 30% had plans to get one in the following year. According to Statista, there are numerous console brands, including Nintendo, PlayStation, and Xbox. These three companies currently control the market, yet their existence was made possible by Atari's groundbreaking efforts. The gaming business as we know it today was founded by Atari. Without Atari's hard work, games like Halo, Zelda, Minecraft, and Grand Theft Auto would not have been created. In fact, it's not an exaggeration to say that, during its height, Atari dominated the gaming market in the same way that U.S. Steel did during the height of its monopoly in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Why then does Atari not appear now alongside PlayStation and Nintendo? The answer is one of the most spectacular tales in business history of meteoric ascension and devastating cratering. Let's examine Atari's ascent and decline. Atari was founded on $500. Utah native Nolan Bushnell is the protagonist of Atari's first chapter. He got engrossed in playing the early video game Space War while enrolled in the electrical engineering department at the University of Utah. IGN claims that Bushnell would sneak into the computer lab to play on a machine that took up the entire room. But he also had a job at a coin-operated pinball and slot machine arcade in a theme park. According to MIT, this fusion of analog games and computers served as the motivation behind Bushnell's intention. To play video games, some people could be willing to spend their money. Together with software programmer Ted Dabney, they created the first video game ever to be sold for coins, dubbed Computer Space. Although it was too complicated to be successful commercially, according to the video game explosion, it did pay $500 in royalties, allowing them to start Sai Zai Guy Company in 1971. The following year, after discovering Sai Zai Guy was already in use, they changed the name to Atari. The word Ataru is a Japanese word that implies a good fortune or that a smart move, such as a chess checkmate, is going to be made. Atari's breakthrough would come in 1972, when Bushnell observed a demonstration of Magnavox's Odyssey console. The console, which had a variety of silent video games, featured one called Table Tennis, which featured two rectangle players bouncing a square ball back and forth. This inspired Bushnell to hire engineer Al Alcorn, who never programmed a computer game before. Pong hit the market like a missile. Pong, according to IGN, was just intended to be a test project to hone engineer Al Alcorn's skills. Nolan Bushnell allegedly created all the specs and informed Alcorn that they were for a contract with GE, which they weren't. Alcorn created the game and even included sound. The fact that the ball accelerated as the game progressed was what set Pong apart from other tennis-style video games. The game had its premiere in the summer of 1972 at an establishment called Andy Cap in Sunnyvale, California. It was tucked away in a cabinet. The pub owner discovered the equipment had broken after a week. Bushnell looked at it because there were too many coins inside. Pong was a huge success. Wired cited Alcorn as saying, We got hit by lightning with Pong. Holy moly! With Pong, Atari realized enormous profits that went beyond simple quarter sales. They sold the units for roughly $1,100, even though they cost about $600 to produce. As a result, Atari was able to expand solely on its earnings. Pong ended up in hotels and airports, in addition to arcades and pool halls. The video arcade market had been launched by Atari. Atari was sued for copyright infringement. Even though Atari was a commercial success, not everyone liked it. Ted Dabney departed Atari as a result of Nolan Bushnell alienating him. Dabney's contribution to Atari has long gone unnoticed, despite the fact that he created the video positioning technology that made Pong feasible. Bushnell sold out to Warner Communications. Warner Communications bought Atari in 1976. According to the New York Times, the transaction cost Warner $28 million. Nolan Bushnell received $15 million of that sum as payment for his ownership stake. Why did Bushnell sell the business that he had only started four years prior? According to the medium of the video game, Atari had just finished creating the home game device known as the Atari VCS, later renamed the Atari 2600. 
he wanted to generate enough units to completely dominate what was turning out to be a crowded market. Bushnell was sacked by Warner. The laid-back atmosphere fostered by Nolan Bushnell and supporting the creative environment came under assault very early from the new ownership. According to Slate, the culture at Atari was loose and hedonistic under Bushnell's management, with regular cannabis-infused parties that included skinny dipping and hot tubs. According to Bushnell, who was reported in Slate, we discovered that our way of life and the parties were quite beneficial for attracting workers. We would invite someone to one of our parties if we were interviewing them for a job. Above all things, nonconformity and innovation were valued. Atari reached its peak with the Atari 2600. Oddly enough, Atari's history's most chaotic period also coincided with its heyday of dominance. Between 1978 and 1982, the business had its apex. Atari profited from sales of the Atari 2600, which was created during the Bushnell era, in the years immediately following Bushnell's ouster, but before the weight of corporate strategy killed the company. Some of Atari's games are the most well-known in history. The video games created by Atari have a strong hold on Generation X's collective memory. The first hit was Space Invaders, but there were many others, according to PC Magazine. Funny enough, one of the breakouts was Breakout, which according to the A to Z of Atari 2600 games, was created by Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak as an arcade game. The first fantasy video game, Adventure, which came out in 1979, had an arrow-shaped sword and three dragons that resembled ducks. Another release from the same year was a port of the well-known arcade game Asteroids. Another arcade port by Atari, Missile Command, was also successful in 1981. Their most peculiar hit, though, was Yar's Revenge from 1982, in which you portrayed an alien-type bug that was attempting to destroy the Kotile. Then, of course, there was Pac-Man from 1982, which aimed to cash in on the wildly successful arcade game. The port itself, according to Vintage Games 2.0, was incredibly defective and didn't resemble the arcade game at all, especially since the programmer had only six weeks to complete it and was constrained by the hardware. The quality of the game tarnished Atari's reputation, even though the game sold millions of copies based solely on brand recognition. Bad Atari games entered the market. Other businesses started flooding the market with low-quality games after they realized they could now create games for the Atari 2600. For instance, Karate, a 1982 video game from FunVision that depicted blocky combatant sparring, wasn't exactly Mortal Kombat. It was dubbed utterly atrocious and one of the worst Atari games in the A to Z of Atari 2600 games. Tiger Vision's 1982 game King Kong, which was essentially a Donkey Kong clone, is a more mediocre but usual subpar offering from a third party. Atari really jumped the shark with E.T. Additionally, Atari made some subpar items on its own. Of course, there was the awful Pac-Man, but at least in that case, they were porting a well-known arcade game. However, Atari had decided to do so in order to make money. According to the minds behind adventure games, one instance is the extremely confusing Raiders of the Lost Ark, which utilized two controllers, which is unheard of. But the video game adaptation of Steven Spielberg's E.T. was the biggest failure. Spielberg was promised fixed royalties of $25 million when the agreement was inked in July 1982. There was pressure to release the game by Christmas. Kassar objected to the project, yet it was nonetheless pushed through. According to The Golden Age of Video Games, the outcome was a frustrating game that was bad and confused. Out of the 5 million cartridges that Atari made, only 1.5 million were sold. By 1983, consumers had taken a strong swing against Atari. Atari crashed and burned the entire gaming industry. Atari was killed by self-inflicted wounds. Atari and the gaming industry as a whole fell due to Atari's poor reputation and the market's oversaturation with subpar and occasionally provocative items. The New York Times reported that Atari lost a staggering $310.5 million in the second quarter of 1983. In fact, sales were so low that the corporation dumped 14 truckloads of used cartridges, many of which were duplicates of E.T. in a New Mexico desert landfill. The cartridges were discovered during an excavation in 2014, contrary to the belief that this was an urban legend, as Polygon reported. Only until the success of the Nintendo Entertainment System did the industry begin to recover. Warner ran Atari like it was a non-tech company, 
which is why it collapsed. It did not perceive the necessity to develop novel and innovative items and instead regarded its machinery as a fixed good. Warner dispersed the business and sold its separate components. Atari was able to hold on for a while, but when its 1993 Jaguar console broke down, it eventually perished in its original form, according to IGN. Atari is still in business today, although after several splits and bankruptcy, the gamer claims that it has ventured into internet gambling and hotels. In video games, it is now attempting to re-establish itself. Ultimately, one has to wonder that if Nolan Bushnell never sold Atari, would it be standing next to Nintendo and PlayStation today? That's it for today's video. Please like the video, subscribe to our channel, and press the bell icon for future updates.